Welcome to PVS the Tutor. In this video, we'll be looking at radioactivity physics. So before we go any further, we need to look at the structure of an atom. We know that an atom is made up of the electrons that orbit the energy level. Then inside an atom, we have a nucleus. The nucleus is made up of protons and neutrons. So we have protons and we have neutrons. So now when we, talk over, when we link uh, an atom of an, uh, an element with radioactivity, so the nucleus of an atom, of a neutral atom, for example sodium, it breaks down into forming new elements and in the process it can either release energy or absorb energy now what is radiation sorry what is radioactive radioactivity is the disintegration of a stable nucleus of an atom into new elements now when we talk of disintegration 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 we mean the breaking so something is breaking so this is an L this is a, this is a nucleus being broken down into new elements now what breaks down is the nucleus not the entire element take note of that now concerning radioactivity we have what we call radiations radiations we have three types of, of radiation and the first one is the alpha radiation also known as an alpha particle so an alpha radiation is simply a nucleus of a helium atom all right It's just the nucleus of a helium atom. Now, now we know that helium has got four as mass number and two as atomic number. So this is why it's called a nucleus of a helium atom. So helium with atomic number four, sorry, uh, with minus mass number four and atomic number two, having proton number as two and neutron number as two this is what makes up an alpha particle. An alpha particle is denoted by the symbol alpha. So you can put a four there and you can put a two there. So in short, we are saying this is a proton. Take note of that. Our second radiation is beta. radiation so beta radiation is just an electron now know that an electron has got mass number zero and atomic number of negative one so when an atom undergoes undergoes beta decay there's an increase in the atomic number of that element. Let's say there we, we have two there. This element is going to form an element of this because it's going to increase in the form of the atomic number because we're going to have two minus negative one which is going to give us three which is here as an increase in the atomic number. That's what I was trying to say. When an atom undergoes an a beta radiation.
so actually a beta radiation is denoted by this symbol with a zero on top and negative one down there our last radiation is the gamma radiation the gamma radiation is a neutral radiation it has a symbol of y in form of that zero mass number and zero atomic number hence when atom when an atom undergoes a gamma decay there's no change in mass number and also there's no change in atomic number so it's neutral let's look at characteristics of these radiations so we have the alpha radiation there and it is saying the penetration power of an alpha radiation is actually weak and don't forget to master that and for beta is medium and for gamma is very strong so it can penetrate through thick walls or thick substances that's why you're saying its penetration power is very strong as a result it can be stopped by reed or concrete you know that reed or concrete they are very thick their diameter is actually very very thick and beta with medium penetration power can be stopped by a thin sheet of aluminium foil or blend of diameter five millimeters and alpha can just be stopped by a piece of paper even when you, when, when you just put a piece of paper in front of uh of in front of a substance we are producing alpha radiation it can be stopped it can go anywhere then we have what called ionization ionization effect you know what ionization effect when an when uh, electrons react with uh with air there's what we call ionization so how is the ionization of alpha it's very strong it's really really very strong and for beta it's medium so media so beta has got your uh, medium for both penetration power and ionization power so you can see and uh, master that then gamma has got a very weak ionization then the charge for alpha is positive like i have talked earlier i say it's a proton then for beta it's an electron so it's a negative charge and for gamma it's neutral so the charge is actually zero that's why they put it there you know that the mass number for an alpha being a helium atom is four atomic mass unit while for beta since beta is like this on top like that so it's zero on top that's why we've got a zero there and for gamma it's zero zero that's why we don't have anything the nature the nature of alpha actually is a nucleus of helium so it's a helium atom well beta is an electron and gamma we know that it's an electro electromagnetic wave or electromagnetic radiation or energy so that's a that's a summary about the characteristics of the three radiations so let's let's look at some of the devices that you can use to, to detect these same three lead uh, active radiations or radiations in short so i won't go that much in details into green diagrams but these are some of the devices that you can use to detect so we've got one of what we call the the photographic film now a, photo, a, fo, a photographic film it gets exposed to those uh, radiation and there are some things that are that appear on the film there to indicate that this radiation is actually alpha or beta or gamma then we've got what to call a gigamola gigamola tube so you can just go on google or something then you just read about the google mula um device so we are saying it contains argon or neon then the charged particles of alpha and beta ionize the argon remember why don't we include gamma here gamma is neutral so nothing can happen when it's included in this device so a neon so it has got charged particles and neon now the electric field accelerates the ion 
leading to further corrosion. So there is corrosion of these uh, um, particles, uh, and the and the ions so that are found there. So this corrosion produces more ionization. Like I said, ionization electrons or ions are going to to corrode or react with air or with other atoms, forming ionization to give a pulse on the meter connected to the out meter. So once this happens, it's going to show a meter, a reading on the meter, whether up or down, to indicate that this is a radio a, a radiation action. So I won't go that much in detail. Try to set down on the Giga Moro. So let me talk about something very important, half-life. So we know that whenever a radioactive element is decaying, all right, or is undergoing uh, radioactivity, it takes time. Now, the time it takes an atom to decay Or decrease by half its original mass is what to call half life. So it's just the time taken in, in other book they are going to rate it as that. Now, this is under the further conditions and other reactions. Now, looking at what we have, half-life, it just is the time taken for an for radioactive isotope or an atom to decay or decrease by half its original mass. So, what I'm trying to say here, what I'm trying to say is, if an atom of mass 200 grams decreases to 100 grams, this is 100 grams, remember, it's a half of 200 grams so the time taken for this to move from 200 to 100 that will go half life and the time is going to take the 100 grams to decrease to 50 grams that's what we call half life the time is going to take 50 grams to decrease to 25 grams that's what we call half life and the time is going to take 25 grams to decrease to 12.5 grams that's what we call half life and just like that so it's the same half life it doesn't change let's look at some of the uh, examples from graphs how you can do it so let's look at this example if you're given a graph like this one and you're asked to find half life what are you supposed to do step one write the initial mass of that substance and you can say the initial mass of that substance is actually 200 so we're going to say 200 we find half of 200 that will give us 100 grams so we go where 100 grams is which is here so 100 grams is there. Then you go down to time. So approximately is giving us two minutes. Remember that in this case time is two minutes. So our half-life actually will be two minutes. And you're going to see that for this one to turn to 50 again is going to lead you to four. And the difference between four and two, it will give you two minutes. Like I said, it's, a, it's constant. It doesn't change. It's the same half right. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to share, comment, and subscribe. In case you need a video concerning a certain topic, just comment. Thank you.